Some of the jets emanated from the dark, unheated side of the comet, an anomaly no one had expected. Chunks of the comets, including rocky particles as big as bullets, blasted the spacecraft as it crossed the three jets. A principal investigator also spoke of energetic bursts like a thunderbolt. The electrical model explains the observations. An electric field accelerates matter in the jet. An electromagnetic pinch effect provides densities in the thin jets many orders of magnitude higher than those predicted from simple radial sublimation and instabilities and fluctuations suddenly relocate jets in exceedingly short periods of time. Recent images of VILT-2 have also revealed unexplained bright spots or hot spots from an electric universe point of view. These are the sparks where electric currents from the sun impinge on the more negatively charged nucleus of the comet as, electri as electricity etches the surface to create the observed sprites, pits, and craters. Such features described as mind-boggling could only be carved on rock, not on sublimating ice or snow. On January 2, 2004, the Stardust craft entered the dusty clouds around Comet Vilt 2, gathering samples of the minute particles as they struck the aerogel in a 100-pound capsule. The capsule returned to Earth and parachuted to touchdown on a Utah desert on January 15, 2006. A surprise! The particles revealed abundances of minerals that can only be formed at high temperatures. Mineral inclusions range from anorthite which is made up of calcium, sodium, aluminum, and silicate, to di diopside, <laughs> made of calcium, magnesium, and silicate. Formation of such minerals requires temperatures of thousands of degrees. How did materials formed by fire end up on the outermost reaches of the solar system, where temperatures are the coldest, asked Associated Press writer Pam Easton. That's a big surprise. People thought comets would just be a cold stuff that formed out where things are very cold, said NASA curator Michael Zolinski. It was kind of a shock to not just find one but several of these, which implies they are pretty common in the comet. This theory-busting discovery must be set alongside a cascade of surprises in comet exploration, all contradicting the hypothesis of dirty snowballs originating in an imagined Oort cloud at the solar system's outer limits. On July 4, 2005, the Deep Impact spacecraft fired an 820-pound copper projectile at Comet Temple 1. Just prior to this occasion, we registered a series of predictions at thunderbolts.info, including but not limited to the following. Point, considerably greater energies will be released than expected because of the electrical contributions of the comet. Next point. An electric discharge in advance of impact is likely. We also expect an interruption of impact or transmission before it reaches the surface. Next point. Scientists will find considerably less water ice and other volatiles than expected, both on the surface and beneath the surface of Temple 1. A completely dry nucleus should not be surprising. Next point. The discharge and or impact may initiate a new jet on the nucleus, which will be culminated, filamentary, not sprayed out, and could even abruptly change the positions and intensities of other jets due to the sudden change in charge distribution on the comet nucleus. Next point. The cameras will reveal sharply defined craters, valleys, mesas, and ridges, the opposite of the softened relief expected of a sublimating dirty snowball. A chunk of ice melting in the sun loses its sharp relief, just like a scoop of melting ice cream. Next point. Electrostatic cleaning will have cleared the surface of dust and debris. The following is a partial summary of correct predictions for deep impact based on the electric com comet model. Energy of explosion. It is now well documented that every scientist associated with the project was stunned by the scale of the energetic outburst. These scientists understood the kinetics of impact and they all agreed that the explosion would be equivalent to 4.8 tons of TNT. That's a good sized bomb, but not even close to what occurred. Advanced Flash 
Electrical theorist Wallace Thornhill predicted at least one flash from electric discharge prior to impact. From the standard viewpoint, that is an absurd prediction when considering an impactor being hit by a body at 23,000 miles per hour in empty space. But here is NASA investigator Peter Schultz's description of the event. Quote, what you see is something really surprising. First, there is a small flash, then there's a delay. Then there's a big flash, and the whole thing breaks loose. Unquote. Missing water. It's pretty clear that this event did not produce a gusher, says SWAS principal investigator Gary Melnick of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. The more optimistic predictions for water output from the impact haven't materialized. Sharp surface relief. We not only predicted the sharply defined relief, but the specific features. The model predicts a sculpted surface distinguished by sharply defined craters, valleys, mesas, and ridges. All of the expected features are present, and astronomers cannot agree on the cause, though all agree that Temple 1 does not look like a melting snowball. Surface arcing. The highest resolution photographs of Temple 1 taken by the impactor show numerous featureless patches of whiteout most located where the electrical hypothesis would put them on the rims of craters and on the wall of cliffs rising above flat valley floors. Electrical etching continually expands valley floors by eating away at the sharp edges of surrounding cliffs. New Jets Electrical theorist Wallace Thornhill was the only one to have anticipated a shift in the arrangement, number, and the intensities of the jets away from the impact site. The 2.5 meter knot telescope of the El Roque del Los Muchachos Observatory at La Palma, Spain released images just before impact and 15 hours after impact. The observatory report states, new jets appeared after the impact. No explanation has ever been given. Electrical disruption. In the final seconds before impact, the video transitions from the impactor showed considerable interference, then stopped moments before it struck the nucleus of Temple 1. The interference pattern appeared to be electrical. Electrostatic cleaning. The surface of Temple 1 contrasts with the surface of an asteroid Itokawa right. The asteroid appears to have attracted considerable surface debris electrostatically. We suggested an active comet will do the reverse deep impact where's the water by the time of deep impact july 4th 2005 comet theory had fragmented into contradictory hypothesis due in part to the absence of detectable water on cometary surfaces a prerequisite of standard theory in 1986 visits to halley's comet by the european Gyato and russian vega probes failed to locate surface water and raised the distinct possibility that the nucleus might not be ejecting water into space in January 2004, the Stardust spacecraft passed by Comet Vilt 2, identifying a dozen jets of material exploding from the nucleus. The craft plowed through surprisingly dense pockets of dust swirling around the comet. But investigators were astonished that, despite the energetic activity, they could not find even a trace of water on the surface. According to NASA report, the flyby of Comet Borley by Deep Space One craft in 2001 detected no frozen water on its surface. When Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 broke apart, astronomers reasoned that the fractured nucleus would expose fresh ices that would sublimate furiously. Several ground-based telescopes and the Hubble Space Telescope trained their spectroscopes on the tails of the fragments of SL9, looking for traces of volatile gases. None of the gases were found. When Comet Lanier disintegrated in front of their eyes, astronomers were not just shocked by the event, a comet exploding many millions of miles from the sun, but they were astonished to find virtually no water in the immediate debris. The absences of, det of detectable water on comet nuclei had produced a crisis in comet theory well before deep impact, and the mission did nothing to rescue the theory. The Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics summarized the early findings with the headline, Deep Impact was a dust-up, not a gusher. Smithsonian astronomers reported the detection of only weak emission from water vapor and a host of other gases that were expected to erupt from the impact site. The most conspicuous feature of the blast was brightening due to sunlight scattered by the ejected dust.